This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to calculate the area of an irregular quadrilateral. Namely, we're going to take a look at this figure and uh, I labeled it side angle side angle side because I have three sides and then I have a couple angles here and these angles are between a pair of sides and another pair of sides. In other words, they're not on the ends away from the sides. They're between sides. So that's why I labeled it as such. All right, so uh, we are going to move forward. And I'm going to show you how to calculate the area of this irregular quadrilateral using a variety of trigonometric functions and formulas. Well, just like our other video that we've calculated the area of irregular quadrilateral given four sides in one angle, uh, there is a something similar uh, in our approach to this. Well, all the formulas in trigonometry deal with triangles. And you can see here that uh, we have a quadrilateral, so that is definitely a problem. So what we're going to do to remedy the situation is we are going to create two triangles. Uh, so it turns out that we have to divide this figure along the diagonal. Now we do have a choice. We could cut the figure this way, which will disturb this 120, or we can cut it this way, which will disturb the 75. In other words, if we cut this along either diagonal, we will chop into one of these angles. All right, so there's really no preference of one or the other. Okay, so I'm just going to divide the figure this way. I'm going to try to do this in a straight line. Oh, close enough. Okay, so if we divide the figure into two triangles with that diagonal, I would first like to calculate the length of this diagonal. Okay, now to calculate the length of this diagonal, we are going to use the law of cosines. And we do have a video on that, uh, so you can always check out the video. But I know I'm going to use the law of cosines because I've, I've got two sides, and I have an angle between those two sides. So it looks like it fits the format of law of cosines. All right, so in other words, I am going to use that to calculate this length. Uh, all right, in doing so, or to do so, I have to label this um, using letters. So what I'm going to do is call this angle A. This is going to be angle B. And this is going to be angle C. Okay, so I arbitrarily labeled this triangle like that so that I could use the formula for law of cosines. All right, so the law of cosines says um, to find this side, which is opposite big C, I'm going to calculate little c. And in order to do that, I have to take a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of big C. All right, and all of this is going to be equal to little c squared. So I'm going to call that little c squared. This is, in other words, this side right here is the diagonal, C. Uh, so I guess I can write that in there. So this is C, the diagonal. Okay, so what I want to do is plug in all the information I know. Well, we don't know what C squared is, but we know that, let's see, this is big A, so opposite it has to be 155, which we have to square. B is the 89. Got to square that. Got to take two times a b cosine of 120, which is big C. Okay, I'm going to take all of this, and what I'm going to do is plug it all into a calculator. So plug it all into a calculator, and when I did that, I got four. 5, 7, 4, 1. So a fairly big number there. So it's 45,741. To cancel the square, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay. So that will cancel the square. And what we should get is C, the diagonal. And I'm going to get 213.9. 
So 213.9 it is. All right, so that is what I would call step one, or the first calculation that we would have to do is calculate the length of the diagonal. Okay, so the second calculation that I'm going to run is I'm going to figure out the area of the triangle. And I'm going to call this first triangle here, I'm going to call it A1. So I'm going to call this area, area 1. Okay, because I'll call the other triangle area, area 2. All right, well, to calculate the area of that triangle, I'm going to use a formula. And the formula is 1 half, multiply the two sides. So I have 89 and 155. And the sine, so I have to multiply it also times the sine of the angle between the two sides. So this is a formula also we use in trigonometry. So we got two sides and the angle between them, plug it into that formula. All right, so I did this earlier and throwing it into a calculator, I get 5,973.4. So almost 6,000 is the area of that triangle. Okay. Now it looks like a lot of work has been done, and, and it is a lot of work that's been done. But I have to now also find the area of the second triangle. To find the area of the second triangle, I would like to use the same formula. So I would like to take this side, this side, and the angle between them. All right, unfortunately, this 75 is not the angle between the two sides. This 75 actually is the entire angle. Okay, I don't want the entire angle. I only want the angle between the two sides. Okay, so in other words, I, to get that angle between these two sides, I have to know what this angle is right here. I got to get that angle. If I get this angle, then I can get this angle next to it because together they add up to be 75 degrees. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, to get this angle, which I'm going to call x, and this angle, which I will then find thereafter, y, okay, to get angle x, I have to use law of sines with this triangle. Okay, and I have a video on law of sines. Third step to calculate angle x. Okay, well, the law of sine says you can form a ratio, two equal ratios, if you have an angle inside opposite and an angle inside opposite. All right, so like for instance, here I've got an angle, 120. Opposite it is our diagonal, which we know is 213.9. As a matter of fact, I should probably write that in there. I know this is 213.9. Okay, so to calculate the, or use the law of sines, that is to calculate for x, I have to use the angle and the side opposite. So I have to use 120 and the side opposite, 213.9. So you always take the sine of the angle and you put it over the side opposite, 213.9. All right, so let's do it again for another angle side pair. Well, now I want to solve for x, so I'm going to take the sine of x, and I also want to use the side opposite x. The side opposite is 89. All right, so that's how the setup works. So now what we're going to do, of course, is cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply these two together, I'm going to multiply those two together. So I get, let's see, I'm going to get 213.9 sine of x. All right, that's what I got from this way. Now I'm going to multiply the other way. I'm going to get 89 sine of 120. All right, so that's what we get when you cross multiply. I'm going to move this down a little bit. I need, obviously, some more room. Okay, so... How do I solve this? Well, I need to get rid of this 213.9 to get the sine x alone. So I'm going to divide both sides. So I guess I could put this here. I'm going to divide both sides by 213.9. Okay. 
Okay, so that means the sine of x is going to be equal to this, this value right here. Okay, because the two 13.9s will cancel, and I get all of this. All right, well, it turns out that I plugged all this into a calculator, and this is what I get. Okay, so I get point three six zero oh, three four approximately. Do a little rounding here at the end. All right, now to get x, you have to undo sine, so you're going to take the inverse sine. So inverse sine of both sides, x is going to be the inverse sine of this decimal number, 0.36034. Okay, so you plug that into a calculator, and x turns out to be 21.1. Degrees. Okay, so that is what x is. So now we know that this angle x is equal to 21.1. Now we have to figure out what y is. Now remember, x plus y, I know that x plus y, I mean, you can show my work over here. So uh, x plus y is equal to 75. So if, if x is 21.1, and then what I'm going to do is subtract 21.1 from both sides to get y. And it looks like y is 53.9. Okay. And that's the angle I was looking for. That angle y right there. Okay, so once we get x, a little tiny bit of math, and we now have y. All right, so I'm going to put that into the diagram since it's so important. This angle now is 53. Point nine degrees. Okay, so I'm going to move this back up. Okay, so what I'd like to do is now f continue the calculation. So I want to get to the fourth step. Uh, our fourth step is now going to be to calculate the area of the second triangle, which I'm going to call this area 2. Okay, so to calculate that area, I'm going to use the same formula I used up here. So area 2 is 1 half, now you multiply the two sides, so one side is 213.9, the other side is 140, and you take the sine of the angle between those two sides which we know now is 53.9. Okay, so you throw that into a calculator, and again I did that earlier, and I'm getting area 2. Okay, so now the second area comes out to be quite large. It's 12,098. So that's what I get when I plug all that into the calculator. Okay, that's our fourth calculation. All right, now, of course, that is not the final answer. Our last step, well, we have to calculate the total. The total, so I'm going to call it AT, the total area. So the total area is nothing more than taking these two areas and adding them together. So you take the area 1, 5973.4, and you add it. To 12098. So we're going to add those two together. And let's see, if I add those two together, I get 18,071.4. And of course, this would be units squared. Whatever the units are, we've got square units. Okay, so uh, I'd like to review all the steps that we took. Okay, now we're going to go through this, and I'm um, just going to summarize as we go along. Okay, first step, we divided the figure, not really a calculation, but we divided the figure into two triangles. We calculated the length of the diagonal, that little red dashed line using the law of cosines. All right, once we've got that side, we then 
wanted to know the area of this triangle. So we calculated the area of the triangle using the two sides and the angle between them. All right, we put that off to the side. Next, we want to figure out what angle X is. We wanted angle X so we can get angle Y. All right, so to get angle X, we use law of sines. So the law of sines is used, and we definitely got X. Had to do a little inverse sine, okay, just to show all the work. We had to do some inverse sine to get that angle X. All right, once we know angle X, we then use that to get angle Y because the sum of those X and Y angles has to be 75. So once we have angle Y, the whole reason we got Y is so we could calculate the second area. That's what we're doing with right here. So to get that area, we have to use, again, the two sides of the triangle and the angle between them. So there you go. You got your two sides, angle between them, calculated, and we got our second area. Now to get the total area of the quadrilateral, you take area 1 plus area 2 and finding the sum. And there you go, we got the sum. So this sum, of course, would have square units because it's an area. Okay, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com and you check out all our other uh, interactive quizzes, our instructional videos, and our text lessons. Take care and have a great day.